notes receivable this is the second topic about or under receivables first we had accounts receivable and then we have this notes receivable before we proceed to answering few problems let us have an overview of the definition the recognition and the measurement of notes receivable first thing what is a note receivable it is actually a receivable or a claim supported by formal promises to pay usually in the form of notes that's why it is called notes receivable now what is this note by the way this is an unconditional promise usually in writing or not usually but most of the time it's in writing made by one person that is um, called the maker given to the payee and what is in this note or in this document? It is where the maker um, puts his or her um, or it is where the maker signifies his intention to pay unconditionally a certain amount of money which has something to do with its or um, with his or her obligation to the payee. So that is a note receivable. This is more formal than the accounts receivable because the accounts receivable verbal lang siya. But this time, it is in writing. So simply stated, it is a promissory note. And I think some of you are already familiar what this promissory note is or um, what promissory note is because I believe sometimes um, in, in the business office, or I'm not sure if you have file, but in uh, this is common basta my examination we usually prepare promissory note indicating that we will pay um we will pay a certain amount sooner or later but not now so bali utang natin dun sa school specifically in spac pag during exam wala tayong maibabayad diba it's a promissory note and it is a contract actually in which one person which I mentioned the maker, promises to pay another person, who is the payee, a definite sum of money. Now, what about the recognition of account of notes receivable? The term receivable, generally, this is an asset. And notes receivable is generally a current asset. So, if the problem doesn't say so, kung ano siya, anong classification siya, kailan siya magmamature, kailan yung junior, it will fall under the category of current asset. Unless, if it is stated otherwise. Okay? So, again, it is an asset under the current classification. Now, let's go to the measurement. Initially, it is measured at face value. I mean, at present value but actually the present value is equal to the face value if your note receivable is short term or if the receivable is interest bearing but if the um, if the receivable is non interest bear bearing the present value is not the face value so we are going to consider some factors like the um, ordinary annuity and the ordinary annuity of one we're going to tackle that one along the way as we answer some problems and subsequently after um after a period of time especially in the preparation of the financial statement if the notes receivable is not yet due we measure it subsequently at amortized cost and again in amortized cost we we consider some factors just um we consider some factors like the present value factor of the receivable now let's proceed to problem number one six dash one we're going to tackle feasible company in this problem we're going to prepare journal entries for year 2019 2020 and 2021 so what happened in feasible company it says that it sold to another at entity a track of land costing 5 million for 7 million now looking at the figures we could easily determine that there is a gain in the transaction so you have a 5 million cost of land you sold it for 7 that's basically 2 million profit 
Now the buyer paid 1 million down payment, so you received instantly cash of 1 million, but the remaining 6 million, the buyer signed a 2 year promissory note for the remainder plus 12% interest which is to be compounded annually. So this is a basic interest uh, principal rate interest problem. The note matures on 2021. That's basically two years after. So let's prepare the journal entries. Like what I've mentioned earlier, we received cash in the amount of 1 million. And we also received a notes receivable from the maker who is the buyer for the remainder which is 6 million remainder of the um the selling price which is 7 million not the 5 million because the 5 million is the cost of the land and that amount will be on the credit and gain on sale of land for 2 million so how did we compute for 2 million? That's just 7 million minus 5 million. Okay. And take note as well that we credit land. It is the asset that we eliminated from our records or from our books. Why do I emphasize this? Because later we will have another credit which is not the asset that not the actual asset that will be credited. Instead, we're going to use another amount. And I guess this is um, already familiar, but I'm going to have an, to give an emphasis of, about this. Now, on 12-31-2019, what could possibly be the journal entry that we will recognize? Wala namang bayaran na nangyari, but we are going to recognize the accounts receivable. I, I, I mean, the accrued <laughs> accrued interest receivable and i think hindi na po siya magkakasya so gagan ko na lang accrued interest receivable accrued in the sense hindi naman niya binigay yung interest due on that note accrued lang okay and on the credit we put interest income now how do we compute for that accrued interest receivable that's simply the balance which is 6 million 6 million times the interest rate of 12% times ilang months ba? That's outstanding for 12 months from January 1, 2019 to 12, 31, 2019. So that's basically times 1. So hindi ko nalalagay yung times 1. And that is 720,000 accrued interest receivable. Again. Again, hindi tayo maglalagay ng cash kasi walang binayad na interest. Sabi niya, it will mature on January 1, 2021 and that is the time kung kailan niya babayaran ang buong 6 million na note receivable together with the interest to be compounded annually. Now, on 12-31-2020, another year passed, di ba? Starting ang manok. We have another accrued interest receivable and your interest income. Ma'am, ano po bang essence ng accrued interest receivable? Why do we record accruals in between dates or during year end? Salamat kay Manok. This is in accordance to um the adjusting entry, tama? periodicity concept. Or the accrual accounting concept, we rec recognize income when earned and we recognize expense when incurred. We do not record income kung kailan lang dadating ang pera. Instead, we record income kung kailan meron na tayong right over that asset. Okay? We call it accrual basis. Iba yung cash basis. And na discuss na natin to under FAR. So, on year 2020, how much and how much interest income did we earn? Did, is it still 720,000? Hindi po. Kasi sabi niya, it is compounded annually. So, income plus the outstanding receivable, that will be the amount na multiply sa 12% na rate. Okay? So, what do I mean by that? That's 6 million plus 
the accrued interest last year of 720 times your 12 percent that will be our interest for this year so that's 6720 times 12 percent and that is equal to 806 400 from the term interest compounded annually so that's a I will no longer expound that theory. Alam na natin yan. High school pa. So, that's 806, 400. But, but the question is, on January 1, 2021, how much cash should we receive from our customer? Is it the 6 million notes receivable? No, it's not just the 6 million. Instead, this one plus yung mga accruals, yung mga interest na hindi niya nabayaran for two years, babayaran niya yun lahat on January 1, 2021. So that would be a total of 7,526,400 debit and cash and a credit to notes receivable. The amount of 6 million, of course, yun lang naman yung notes. So the difference, that's 1,526,400 will be your accrued interest receivable. So, wala ka ng interest receivable. Babayaran niya na on January 1, 2021. Ma'am, how would we know kung tama ba, yung, tama ba ang 1,526,400? So, you just add this one. And looking at the sum, tama naman. 1,526,400. 1, so, that will be our entries for 2019 to 2021 for problem 6-1, Feasible Company. What's um what's something new about this problem is the theory about interest compounded annually and also this one. Take note ang binenta niya yung asset na ginagamit niya in the operation. How about in 6-2? Again, we are to prepare journal entries for the current year. By is it bygone or bygone? Let's have bygone. Bygone company manufactures and sells computers. On January 1, 2019, the entity sold a computer costing 400 for 600. Looking at the figures again, we could conceptualize that there is already a profit of 200,000. On the second paragraph, however, the buyer signed a non interest bearing note for 600,000, payable in three equal installments every December 31. Now, the question is, is it really true that there is a non-interest bearing note that exists? The answer is no. There's no such thing as zero interest. There's no such thing as non-interest bearing. So, ano ang ibig sabihin ng non-interest bearing? This just means that the interest andun na siya sa amount na binigay. So, parang nakabuilt in na. But, looking at it, substance over form my interest talaga okay so sabi niya pa the, sh the cash selling price of the computer is 540,000 cash selling price obviously yan yung price kung bibilhin mo yung computer for cash pero yung sinabi niya sa first paragraph it is sold for diba sa bakay mga bata it is sold for 600,000. That means the difference between the cash selling price and yung utang na 600, 60,000 difference is the implied interest there. So again, walang non-interest bearing. There's no such thing as zero interest in this world. Now, let's proceed to the preparation of our journal entries for the current year lang naman yung hinihingi. So, Okay. My down payment ba na nangyari? Walang down payment. So, notes receivable in the amount of 600,000. Actually, yung 540,000 dyan na cash selling price. Hindi mo naman siya makikita sa entry. Pinakita niya lang or sinabi niya lang for us to determine kung magkano yung implied interest. Okay, so again, a debit of notes receivable and a credit of, do we credit 
or are we going to credit computer or equipment? The answer is no. We credit inventory. Ma'am, why inventory? Na computer naman yung binenta. So, dapat computer, ma'am, or equipment, etc. Okay. It manufactures and sells. It means it is the ordinary course of the business. It's the ordinary operation. It is the usual operation of the business. Compare it to problem 6-1. Hindi niya sinabi na ang feasible company is engaged in buying and selling land. Okay? Sinabi niya lang, the company sold to another entity a tract of land. Balik tayo sa 6-1. So, we will have an idea na, ay, okay, this is um, not an ordinary event. Once in a blue moon lang nagbibenta ng land ang kumpanyang ito. Hindi niya talaga normal na operation na magbenta ng lupa. That's why in 6-1, we credit land. But in 6-2, we credit inventory because the buying and selling, or hindi, niya, hindi siya buy and sell pala. The manufacturing and the selling of the computer equipment is actually the usual or the normal operation of the company. That's why, again, we credit inventory. Now, the question is how much we credit it at its cost, which is 400000 And the difference... How much is the difference? Okay. Um, actually, we could credit inventory. Or, I mean, not inventory, but we credit sales. Okay, why sales? Again, it is the normal operation of the business. I would like to, to correct that the credit, hindi siya inventory. Okay, if we are using the periodic, uh, periodic method. If we are using the perpetual we will have another entry which is debit, cost of goods sold, credit, merchandise, inventory. Doon pala tayo magka-credit. But eventually, ganun din ang effect. It is the inventory that we sold, not our ordinary asset or not our capital asset. Okay? So, we credit sales in the amount of 540000 So, yung sinabi ko kanina na hindi mag a si 540000 it's actually when... Um, we, we are using the perpetual method. In perpetual method, the second entry there, we will use the 400,000. mag appear pa rin pala si 540,000. I would like to correct that. The 540,000 will still appear as your amount in your credit na sales. Okay? And then the 400,000 should appear if we are using the perpetual. San siya mag appear Dun sa debit cost of goods sold, and then credit merchandise inventory. But in this problem, we will just use the generally used method, which is the periodic. So, hindi na ako gagawa ng isa pang entry. So, we credit it at sales of 540000 And then, the difference, which I call the implied interest, we will credit it to unearned interest income in the amount of sixty. Unearned. Unearned kasi hindi mo pa siya na-earn, basically. Paano mo siya ma-earn? Through, um, through a lapse of time. So, as the time goes by, as the months go by, we are going to earn that interest. So, ang sabi niya, every December 31 for three equal annual installments. So, every year, meron tayong part sa 60,000 na ma-earn. Okay, so um, on January 3, I mean, on December 31, 2019, we are going to collect, right? Okay, three equal annual installments. So, magbabayad siya ng how much? That's 600 divided by 3. Magbabayad siya ng 200 kasi equal annual installments daw. And also, we will have the accrued interest receivable and the interest income. Now, the question is how much? Ganon din ba divided by 3? 60,000 divided by 3? Now, in this problem, we will use the outstanding balance method. And what do I mean by that? Let's have 2019... 2020 okay 
2020 and 2021. Okay, for 2019, how much is the balance of your notes receivable for the whole year? It's actually 600,000. Ma'am, bakit 600,000? Eh, nung December 31, nagbayad na ako ng 200. So, dapat 400 na lang. Okay, imagine that. From January 1, 2019 to December 30, 2019, that's 365 days, 364, uh, 600,000 ang balance. May isang araw lang na naging 400,000 ang balance on December 31, 2019. So, saan ba doon ang mas mabigat? The 600,000 balance for 364 days or yung 400,000 balance for one day? Actually, the balance for 2019 is 600,000 or the outstanding balance. Nung huling araw na siya nagbayad, kaya hindi natin i-consider na ay 400 na lang. Okay? For the whole 2019 ang i-consider. On January, I mean on year 2020 naman, the balance is 400,000. Starting December 31, 2019 going to December 30, 2020. That's 400. Okay? And on 2021, nagbayad na naman siya ng 200,000 sa 2020 year end. Kaya on 2021, 200,000 na lang yung balance. And outstanding balance method says we add all of these and then we try to get the fraction. So that is 600,000 divided by the sum which is 1.2 and hindi siya naka-fraction. So if you do the math, wag, hindi ko na siya set para dire-diretso na. So 600 divided by 1.2 that's actually 1 over 2 and then 400,000 divided by 1.2 that's actually 1 over 3. Okay, yung fraction niya pwede naman decimal if you want. Then, 200 divided by 1.2. So, that's basically 1 over 6. After getting the fraction of the balances for each year, we then multiply it by the unearned interest income. So, for year 2019, the 60,000 unearned interest income will be earned by one half. That's 30,000. On 2020, that's 60,000 still times one third will be earned for such for that year 20,000 and lastly for 2021 the 60,000 implied interest will be earned that's 10,000 and if we are going to look at it getting the sum of these three figures you will get the 60,000 unearned interest income ito yun so on the date on the day of the transaction, you have your interest income na hindi mo pa na-earn. Ma-earn mo lang siya sa pag, um, tawag nito, as time goes by. And we will, we could compute kung magkano interest ang i-recognize -re natin each year using the outstanding balance method. So, we are using the outstanding balance method kasi hindi install, I mean, hindi lump sum yung pagbayad. Hindi lump sum kasi installment method. Installment siya in a sense na every year nagbibigay o nagbabayad siya ng certain amount. Kaya nag-change ang outstanding balances. So for this year 2019, we already computed that amount and that is 30,000. So on year 2020, we will have the same entries. However, this amount will be 20,000. On year 2021, we will have the same entries and the accrued interest receivable will be 10,000. And then we are going to recognize cash and then credit notes receivable 200,000 each year. Okay? So that's 6-2. And dito po kasi ako sa bahay namin sa Davao kaya medyo maingay. I can't find the place kung saan pwedeng mag-record na, you know, medyo soundproof pero wala talaga. Okay? So, let's proceed to 6-4. 6-3 will be left as an exercise for you. 6-4, we have gullible company. 
this company is a dealer in equipment. So, ayan, dealer na naman siya. So, ibig sabihin, ang ikikredit natin, hindi equipment. Instead, sales. Kasi, it's the normal, the ordinary course of business. Now, we are required to prepare journal entries, determine the carrying amount, and the interest income. So, on December 31, 2019, the entity sold an equipment in exchange for a non-interest bearing note requiring five annual payments. But parang medyo maingay. On December 31, 2019, the entity sold an equipment in exchange for a non-interest bearing note. Ay na naman yung non-interest bearing na scam kasi interest bearing talaga siya. Requiring 5 annual payments of 500,000. So, each year, magbabayad siya ng 500,000. Now, the first payment was made on December 31, 2020. That's one year after. The market interest for similar notes. Kasi sinabi niya, non-interest bearing. So, walang binigay na interest rate. But if you will study the market on the same transaction, the interest there is actually 8%. And we have here the present value factors. So, these present value factors determine kung magkano yung real amount okay, ng perang marireceive mo in the future. So, mura siya, um, uh, we call this time value of money. So, if you already have your mathematics in investments, so you will, um, I'm sure you have encountered this one. Pero kung wala pa, for the sake of those na walang mathematics of investment na, na subject, um, Time value of money says that your 1 peso today will not be the same 1 peso 5 years from now, 4 years from now, or some years from now. And your 1 peso today is not the same as your 1 peso 5 years ago or some years ago. Okay? So that's why we consider it especially for non-interest bearing note. It means that your 500,000 today is not the same as the 500,000 that you will be receiving for the next 5 years. So, we consider this present value factors. So, ano bang, um, bakit nagkakaroon ng difference yung 500,000 natin today versus the 500,000 in the future or in the past? Because there are some factors in the economy, especially this inflation, okay? So, noon, yung 50 pesos mo, you could buy 2 kilos of rice. But ngayon, yung 50 pesos mo, you could buy 1 kilo of rice na lang. Or some years ago, you could, maybe you could buy a sack of rice for your 50 pesos. So, the time value or the purchasing power of money changes. So, we, we'd, we would also consider that the, the value of your money that you will be receiving for the next 5 years kung magkano siya ngayon. And the difference between the absolute amount and the real amount or the present amount of that money, the difference between the two is actually your implied interest. So, so much explanation. Let's proceed to the application. On December 31, 2019, we sold an equipment equipment and walang down payment na nangyari so we will debit notes receivable credit again sales and your unearned interest income your notes receivable is actually 500,000 times 5 equal annual installments so every year 500 times 5 years that's 2.5 million in total and your sales is Magkano ba yung sales? Yan yung hindi niya binigay at yan yung i-co-compute natin. Your sales is actually the present value of your 2.5 absolute amount. And how are we going to compute that? We have two factors there. PV of 1 or present value of 1 at 8% for 5 periods. And present value of an ordinary annuity of 1 at 8% for 5 periods. We use PV of 1 if the payment is lump sum, ibig sabihin, isang bagsakan lang. So, pag sinabi niya, magbabayad siya ng 2.5 million after 5 years, isang bagsakan. Pero sinabi niya dito, magbabayad ako ng 500,000 each year for the next 5 years. So, we call it installment. 
So if the payment is installment, we use the PV of ordinary annuity of one. So this time, we will use the 500,000 installment, annual installment. Hindi yung 2.5 yung multiply mo sa PV of ordinary annuity ha. The annual installment, which is the 500,000 times your 3.99 PV factor. Therefore, the present value of your money is 1995,000 9, only. So if you could see, kung karun lang unta to siya ning palit, iya untang bayaran is 1.9 lang. Pero kay dugay man kaayo ang pagbayad, that's 5 years. Kaya sinabi ni seller ay okay, 2.5 ang cost, I mean ang selling price. The difference there is actually your implied interest. And that is 505,000. So that's our entry for um, 2019. Let's proceed to 2020. Ano bang nangyari sa 2020? There's a collection, right? An annual collection of 500,000. What else? Accrual, we will have accrued interest receivable. And, oh, this time, hindi na pala siya accrued interest receivable. Instead, it is called your unearned interest income. So, going back to 6-2, I'm so sorry, hindi na siya accrued interest receivable kasi na-earn na pala to si unearned interest income. So, hindi na siya unearned, kundi earned na siya. Kaya, alisin mo yung unearned mo dyan, unearned interest income. And then, yung partner niya, interest income. Compare it to 6-1, wala tayong unearned interest income kasi hindi siya ordinary um, ordinary sale of asset or inventory. Kaya yung credit natin, gain on sale. So, hindi natin il pwedeng ilagay dyan, gain on sale. Kaya nag tayo. However, in this problem, meron tayong unearned income which we eventually earned Kaya in-eliminate natin siya, dinebit natin. The same goes sa 6-4. We debit unearned interest income and credit interest income in the amount of, yan, yung hindi natin alam. And yan yung i-co-compute natin using this table. We call this your table of amortization. Simple lang naman yung mga nasa table natin. First, we have the date. Your annual collection, if you are using installment, pero kung hindi naman installment, kung lump sum, tatanggalin natin si annual collection. And then you have your interest income, which is based on the market interest of 8%. Sinabi niyo yun kanina. Okay, so that's 8%. And then we also have... Ay, sorry. We also have the third column, which is the principal. And then you have the present value. So your present value is actually the 500,000 times 3.99 na na-compute natin at nilagay natin dito sa sales na amount. So to illustrate, papakita ko pa rin. That's 500, 500 times 3.99. So, ayan. 1.995,000. Then, our interest income will be based on the present value. So, that's 1995 times your 8%. That's 159,600. This means that every year, makakakolek ka ng 500,000. Pero, out of that amount, 159,600 is the implied interest. Hindi yung buong 500,000 principal. May part dyan na interest na hindi sinasabi sa'yo kasi yung orientation, non-interest bearing daw siya. So, how much is the principal lang pala? So, that's 500 minus the implied interest. The principal is just 340,400. And this is your present value. This is the principal actually. And during year 1, Nagbayad na tayo ng 34400 Therefore, the outstanding principal or present value is just 
1654600 and the following year our interest income will be based again on our present value but this time the outstanding present value that's 8% therefore your interest income is 132368 now for year 2020 we already have the value our interest income or the un or the earned interest income for year 2020 is 159600 which we computed a while ago based on the present value times the 8% market interest so 159600 so if we are going to continue the, um if you're going if you're going to continue the preparation of financial statements year 2021 ganito pa rin cash 500 notes receivable 500 and unearned interest income and interest income however the amount will be 132368 so the succeeding years ganun pa rin ang magiging entry however the unearned interest income figures will change so let's compute or let's complete this table so that we will have um, an illustration of the preparation of the table of amortization. So for year 2021, you have collection of 500. However, my 132 jan na implied interest. Therefore, ang principal lang pala is 367,632. So ito lang yung principal na nabayaran during the year. Therefore, your outstanding principal for year 2021 is 1286968 which is the base amount for our succeeding years interest income so that is 102957 interest income kung yan ang collection ito ang interest therefore my principal na 397043 na nabayaran for 2022 Therefore, the balance will now be 889925 kung saan dyan na naman natin ibibase ang ating 8% interest. So, out of 500, my 71 na implied interest. Therefore, the principal is 428806. Balance na lang is 461119. Okay. Now, since this is the last year of our payment, yung principal natin, diretso na natin, 461. Kasi yan na lang yung balance. Bakit natin siya dederetso, ma'am? Para magzi-zero out. Last year na yan eh, so dapat zero na yung utang. And working back, how much is the interest pala? Kung 500 ang annual collection, 461 ang principal, therefore yung interest natin is 38881. Okay? So iba yung method natin pagdating sa last year. Bakit pala? Pag, pag sinunod natin yung usual na method, ma'am, will there be any difference? Yes. Let's illustrate. If we're going to use the same method, let's say 461119 times your 8%, Ayan. Therefore, ang babayaran na principal is 463110. And looking at this, may negative 1991. Ibig sabihin, may refund na 1991, which does not happen actually. Dapat zero talaga siya. So, para ma-zero siya, we will use that logic na dapat ito din yung babayaran natin principal para mag zero out siya and to do that 38880 na lang ang interest income if you could observe if we're going to add all of these principal payments pag ia-add natin yan how much ito to illustrate just to illustrate lahat ng principal Diba sabi natin kanina, 1995 is actually the principal or the present value. Yan. Adding all of these, dapat ang equal kani. How about this one? Ito yung interest income every year. So, dapat pag in mo yan lahat, 
mag-equal siya sa unearned interest income mong 505,000. Let's try to check kung tama ba. And there you have it, 505,000. And furthermore, adding these two, the interest and the principal, dapat makuha natin yung absolute amount na 2.5, right? Ito lahat. So, add natin this one, the interest, and the principal, 2.5. Pag hindi naging equal yan, try to assess your table of amortization. Baka may mali. Okay? So, didelete ko na lang muna siya, ha? Ayan. So, this is your table of amortization. Now, we are asked the second question we will determine the carrying amount of the note receivable on December 31, 2020. Okay. December 31, 2020, carrying amount is actually this. If you have prepared your table of amortization and you will be asked on how much is the carrying amount, how much is the interest income for the year, how much is... um the the princip uh, the payment that is actually uh, that goes to the principal you could easily answer those questions if nag prepare ka ng table of amortization but if you didn't then we're going to compute it manually or the traditional way so year 2020 tama ba ang tinatanong niya okay carrying amount for year 2020 that's actually one year after so, your notes receivable is 2.5, the beginning of the transaction. And one year after, nagbayad po tayo ng 500,000. Therefore, on year 2020, you only have 2 million outstanding notes receivable. But to compute for your carrying amount, we consider your unearned interest income, which is contra to your notes receivable. And if it's contra asset, it is... A deduction. Now, question. How much is your unearned interest income for year 2020? Beginning unearned interest income na then is 505. But, may na-earn na tayo during 2020, which is 159,600. Therefore, we are going to deduct that one. So, that's a minus 159. And the balance is 345,400. And, 2 million minus 3, 4, 5, 400 is actually 1 million 6, 5, 4, 600, which is the same to the amount that I have given you a while ago. So, diba, mas madali kapag nakapag-prepare tayo ng table of amortization. Okay. So, question number 3. Determine the interest income for 2021. Again, we could compute it. But looking at your amortization table, mas madali natin siyang madidetermine. Interest income for 2021 is actually this one. That's 132368. 2021, interest income. Okay. So, that's 6 4 I will leave 6-5 as your exercise. Let's proceed to 6-6, which is... Hmm, medyo mataas. This is remarkable company and we are required to determine the amount of notes receivable including accrued interest. That should be classified as current and we are also going to determine the amount that should be classified as non-current. So, ano po bang meron sa 6-6? We have remarkable company. So, the company had the following account balances on January 1, 2019. You have note receivable from sale of an idle building. So, this um, transaction is actually a sale of a capital asset and not an inventory. Kasi sabi niya, idle building, ibig sabihin hindi ginagamit na building. That's 7.5. And note receivable from an officer, 2 million. Now, the 7.5 million note receivable is dated May 1, 2018. Bears interest at 9%. So, wala tayong problema kasi interest bearing. And represents the balance of the consideration received from the sale of an idle building to solid company. 
So, si solid pala yung nakabili. Principal payments of 2.5 plus interest are due annually beginning May 1, 2019. Solid Company made the first principal and interest payment on May 1, 2019. Wala tayong problema kasi nagbayad naman pala siya. Let us prepare journal entry for an easier um, analysis. So, on May 1, 2019, we received cash from Solid Company in payment of its note payable. Note payable on his part, notes receivable on our part which is 2.5 million. Okay. That's 2.5 million. Next, ay, sinabi niya rin na plus interest. Therefore, meron tayong interest na i-consider. But my question is, is it wholly interest income? I'm afraid there is an accrued interest that happened. Accrued interest receivable. So, to illustrate, lagay ko muna somewhere dito. On May 1, 2018, ano po bang naging, ano po ba ang naging entry niya on May 1, 2018? May 1, 2018, di ba simple notes receivable and then is it land? Okay, land. Hindi, na, hindi natin alam kung magkano. I mean, how much is the cost of the land? So, let's just assume na yung notes receivable is 7.5. And land, hindi natin alam. Hindi rin natin alam kung gain or sale ba or loss on sale. But it has nothing to do with our analysis on interest anyway. So, on May 1, 2018, yan yung entry. And... I'm sure on December 31, 2018, may ginawang entry na accrued interest receivable. Accrued interest, hindi siya, hindi siya unearned interest income kasi yung binenta is a capital asset and not an inventory. And then, may interest income din siyang kinredit. In the amount of how much? The outstanding is 7.5 times the 9% interest times oh, ba? 9% interest times ilang months siya outstanding. So that's from May going to December 31. That's May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's 8 months over 12. Therefore, the accrued interest receivable is 450000 Yan yung accrued interest receivable niya for year 2018, which was paid on May 1, 2018. Therefore, meron tayong 450000 na accrued interest. And the remaining 4 months, so that was 7.5 times 4 months. Bakit 4 months? Kasi... From January 1 going to May 1, 2019, 4 months lang yun, times 4 divided by 12, that's 225,400, I mean 225,000. Go If you're going to add the 2, it is equivalent to 1 year interest. Solve natin dito ang 1 year interest, that's 7.5 times 9%. Ayan, 675. For going to add the 2, that's actually 675,000. So that's the same. What I would like to emphasize is, yung interest income natin is depende kung kailan mo siya na earn or kay anong year siya applicable. Sa anong year siya applicable. The 450,000 is not actually an income for this year. Kasi yung 8 months na naglapse was actually. Um, year 2018. Yung, 400, yung 225 lang ang income for 2019 kasi yan lang yung naglapse na 4 months for year 2019. So, we do not consider the 675 interest income for 2019 alone kasi may nakinabang din from 2018. Specifically, the May 1 hanggang December 31, 2018. 
So if you will be asked, how much is the interest income for year 2019 in relation to um, receivable from solid company? The, quest, the answer is 225 and not 675. Now, on December 31, 2019, ano yung record We have accrued interest, receivable, and interest income. Like what we did dun sa baba. But this time, it's year 2019. And yung basis niya is no longer 7.5 kasi nagbayad na tayo ng 2.5. Therefore, the basis is 5 million times 9% times ilang months outstanding yung 5 million from May 1 going to 1231. So, that's 8 months divided by 12. And that's a 300,000 accrued interest receivable and that accrued interest receivable magzi zero siya or makokolect siya may 1 next year 2020 now let's have the next statement the 2 million note receivable is dated december 31 2016 bears interest at 8 percent and is due on 2021 the note is due from the president the interest is payable annually on December 31 and all interest were made. So, walang installment na nangyari for this year. Babayaran niya yung whole amount ng note receivable na 2 million on 2021. Let's focus on 2019. So, again, walang installment na nangyari. Instead, there is a payment. So, hindi na pala siya accrued kasi nagbayad siya. Cash and then interest income in the amount of that's two million interest bearing sha na eight percent. There is a one hundred sixty thousand interest income collected from the president of Remarkable. On July 1, 2019, the company sold a parcel of land to Boom for four million under installment. Boom made a 1.2 cash down. Okay, so let's record cash. That's 1, 2. And the remaining balance is evidenced by a notes receivable. Okay, so that's 4 million divide minus 1.2. It's basically 2.8. Sinabi niya naman. 2.8. Okay. And that is interest bearing for 10%. So we credit land and not inventory. And how much is the cost of the land? Okay, the equal annual payments of principal and interest on the note totaled 880000 on July 1 each year. The fair value is 4 million and the cost is 3 million. So, eradicate. Kung kakapasok lang ng asset, we record it at fair value. Pero kung aalisin mo na siya sa record mo kasi bebenta mo siya or didispose mo siya, we record the elimination or the recognition at its cost, which is 3 million. Therefore, you have that gain on sale of land which is 1 million that's 3 million cost minus 4 million na contract price so that's 1 million now on december 31 2019 walang payment na nangyari instead there is an accrued interest receivable that should be recorded and a credit to your interest income but the question is how much sabi niya 2.8 million 10 percent and considering the lapse of time that's just okay ako na. that's 2.8 2.8 na outstanding balance times how much 10 percent Times how many months outstanding? That's from July 1 to 12.31. That's July, August, September, October, November, December. That's 6 months over 12. Therefore, your accrued interest is income is 140. 
5,000. I think that's it. Magbabayad siya next year pa naman, 2020. Our, our focus is on 2019 only. So, we are going to determine sanjan yung current asset, sanjan yung non-current asset, and how much. Now, let's start with solid company. At the end of the year, meron siyang notes receivable na notes receivable 12-30-2019 na 5 million. Bakit 5 million? Kasi 7.5 yun at the start, right? Pero, during the year, um, specifically on May 1, nagbayad na ng 2.5 million. Therefore, the balance is only 5 million. And this 5 million is due on May 1, 2020. That's one less than one year from year end. And the remaining... 2.5 is payable more than one year from December 31, 2019. Ito, babayara next year. So, this could be considered current asset. This one is babayaran next next year. Therefore, this is a non-current asset. What else? Your accrued interest. Kasi yung sabi dun sa problem, determine the current asset including the accruals. Accrued interest receivable, which is, ayan, compute na rin naman natin, that's 300, and accruals are actually current assets. Babayaran niya yan May 1 next year. What else? Wala na. Now, let's proceed to precedent. Kay precedent naman, meron siyang notes receivable outstanding na babayaran niya on 2021, if I'm not mistaken, right? Notes receivable on 12, okay, due on, again natin, due on 12, 31, 21, in the amount of 2 million. So, kailan pa siya magjuju Next, next year pa. Therefore, this is a non-current asset. How about the interest, ma'am? Wala naman siyang accrued interest. Walang accrued kasi binayaran niya. Okay? Next, boom. Meron na naman siyang notes receivable outstanding na 2.8, right? Ito. Copy ko na lang siya. So, for boom, meron siyang notes receivable na it was 2.8. Tama? 2.8. But, part of that is payable on payable the following year and another a part of that is payable next few years so due on may 1 2020 this may 1 right i guess that's due on july 1 I-check ko muna yung audio ko. Baka hindi na naman niya. Check mic test. Ay, okay. Andiyan pa pala. Okay, sorry. That's July 1, 2020. And the rest will be due on the next few years. Okay? Next, next year. Next, next, next year. And so on. So, on due on 2020 is actually, hindi pa natin alam. But let's compute it by looking at the problem. Sabi niya, every year magbabayad ng 880,000. Kasali na dyan yung principal at kasali na, dyan, na rin dyan si interest. Now the question is, how much is the interest pala? The interest is actually outstanding, which is 28 times 10%. Ay, Okay. 280,000 for the interest. Therefore, yung 880,000 mo na babayara next year, 280 dyan is for the interest. Therefore, 600 lang ang para sa principal. So, kung 600,000 principal is due next year, the remaining 2.2 will be due next next year and the years after. Therefore, this one is a current asset. 
Na-delete ko. Sorry po. Okay. So, this one is a current asset and this one is a non-current asset. Ma'am, paano naging 280 ang interest? Na yung nilagay natin dito is 140. 140 kasi 6 months pa lang yung naglaps, remember? Ayan, 6 months. If you're going to consider the next 6 months, that is another 140, i-add mo sa accrued interest receivable mo na 140, it's a total of 280,000. Kaya, 280,000 yung interest na na-compute natin kanina. Don't be confused kasi ito, times 6 over 12 lang siya. Okay? The next 6 months, you are going to accrue another 140. That's a total of 280. So, what else? Of course, your accrued interest receivable, which is 140,000. So, this year, 2019, the accrued receivable is just 140 and not 280. Kasi 6 months pa lang ag nag from the date of transaction, which is July 1. And this is again a current asset. Payable next year. So, we could now compute how much current asset will be recognized on year 2019 or on December 31, 2019. And that is this one plus another current asset. So let's have, uh, let's have, <laughs> let's just select all the current assets classification. So there's a total of 3.54 current asset and non-current asset. We have 2.5, we have 2 million and 2.2 a total of 6.7 non-current asset so that's for remarkable company so if there are items na medyo nalibugan you could pause the video and then review review so that you're going to be more than familiar maging expert talaga when it comes to notes receivable so each problem has um a new theory or um a new concept that has been introduced so be familiar with all of those okay so that ends the notes receivable discussion and we will have other receivable concepts on the next um on the next lesson that we are going to discuss that's specifically loans receivable okay